All right, you guys, we're back, and we are on episode number 37 for Behind the Bikini. And if you haven't done so already, like, comment, subscribe, all the fun things that we always talk about. But um, this week, we're going to talk about competition day essentials, because I know this is something that people ask me all the time, like what you should have in your in your bag for the show day and all that kind of fun stuff. But um, before we get into all of that, how are you doing? We're, we're early this morning, so we're both like, you're, are you drinking coffee? Because I'm definitely on my coffee right now. Oh, yeah. I have espresso here and a cup of coffee at 6.30 my time here. So. <laughs> yeah. we're Just so you guys know, we don't usually do this this early, but... But um, we got we got things going on this weekend. So where are you headed this weekend? Um, I'm heading nowhere. I am actually moving this weekend in a different building or a different apartment in the same building. We uh, signed a 15 month lease out here. We had a short term lease out here with a one bedroom, and so everybody wants to come visit. We have no space for them, so yeah. we are getting a two bedroom. So we're gonna finish work today and get the keys tonight and start moving all weekend. But we're really excited for that. But this is like my one weekend off in eight weeks. So <laughs> I'm moving. Yeah. Do you have to move everything this weekend? Like, is that, does it all have to be done and out? Yeah. yeah they were, Cause they're being, they're being very nice about it. They're like, yeah, you know, you guys just take it through Sunday, you know, to be in the other spot. So you, knowing me, I'll have it all done by 2 a.m. tonight. <laughs> well, good for you. I, I hate moving. Like when we moved into this house, we moved out of a townhouse. We had plenty of time because they were selling the townhouse that we came, that we, um, we were renting before. So we have plenty of time to move out. <laughs> it took us like six weeks to actually move out of the apartment into the house. Uh, plus, I mean, it's one thing if you're going from an apartment to an apartment or condo or whatever, like we went from a townhouse to a house, you know what I mean? It's, it's a whole lot more to have to move. When it's a house. No, I was like, absolutely. I mean, I still oh. have my house in Florida. So like yeah. I only brought here what I would say the necessities. Like I'm kind of yeah. living like a nomad lifestyle right now. And we were at our house in Florida last week and we were just kind of looking at everything. And honestly, everything that's left there, we don't really need, you know. Yeah. So we're going to start, you know, getting rid of things and at the house in Florida and try to figure out what we're going to do with that. We're trying to figure out if we're going to do an Airbnb or a long term rental. Yeah. So if we Airbnb it, then we can keep some furniture that's there. If not, we got to get rid of it. So we're going to go back there in June and spend a full week there and try to figure out what we're going to do. But okay. from here, when everything we have in Arizona, now it's like we kind of get to redesign our house again. So it's, it's kind of fun. Like I was trying to decide if I wanted to bring the rest of the furniture over to Arizona. But just to be quite honest, like that Florida house has a really good mix of good memories and bad memories. So I'm just yeah. kind of looking to start fresh and, yeah. you know, the new me. And um, I bought most of that furniture when I was 20 years old, you know, when we were first out of college. So we're definitely moved on from like those colors and things like that. Yeah. So it's exciting. It's well, that's what I was going to say too, like, like the aesthetic is probably a lot different when you're in Arizona versus Florida. You know what I mean? Yeah. Florida has, Florida has definitely like a vibe when it comes to the homes and like the, like the furnishings and all of that kind of stuff in comparison to probably a lot of other places in the U S <laughs> like, well, I, I feel like also like, I don't know my style. Like I have like, yeah. one, one farm piece and then one like black piece and it's like nothing is cohesive and I'm still not good at any of that. I have friends now that can help with that. Yeah. Together. Dan's <laughs> so really good. At, Dan's really good at that stuff. I'm just like, he'll, he'll show me something. He'd be like, do you like this one or this one? I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm like, Either one is fine. Like I can't funny? even tell you. Like we have this- good with fashion, but. Yeah, we have this um this decorative wall behind uh, in one of our offices, and he's showing me all like the stone like slabs to put on the wall, you know, for the decorative pieces. And I was like, I don't care; they're all the same color gray. Like one is like a little bit more gray than the other. (laughs) Something that I've been working on (laughs) is putting like a collage wall together, but I only want six frames. Mm. Do you know how hard it is to narrow down to six photos? Like I just scroll and I'm like, I could do this one, I could do this one, but these do 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 these go together it's yeah. so hard like that's the silliest project you need to do but... like an actual shoot for it because that's, we, we did a we did a shoot for our 10 year anniversary so that's what we oh, did we fun. have the like we have the photos from that shoot that we have in our living room you in know what i mean photo. that's a yeah. really great idea like with like the cactuses yeah and, like a desert theme i like that yeah, 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 yeah. Then they then they're all cohesive, you know. Yeah. So that it's not as um, hard to pick. <laughs> yes. Well, that and that's so we're trying to figure out what we're doing for the pool room too because I've I, you know I've having modeled for a long time we have random prints of me like naked in the house. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's so it's like <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's like fine art, but it's like when you we we're so oblivious to it, but then people come over and we're like, oh yeah, that is my naked ass on the wall. <laughs> I'm like, 
You're welcome. Like, yeah, enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Know, we had our handyman over the other day, and Dan's got a few of them in his office, right? And, and so our handyman's in there with, with Dan in his office, and they're talking, and he's like looking like this at the wall the whole time. And Dan's like, what is he looking at? He's at the wall, and it's a photo of me naked. On the wall. He's looking at your eyes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's looking in my eyes, not, not yeah. Dan's. <laughs> so it's like, you know, because again, with us, like when we talk about bodybuilding and stuff, all this stuff is normal for us, but like, you know, oh like gosh, somebody. Normal. like somebody else comes into and they're like what you stare at glutes all day long <laughs> like what what's i don't all i see is a butt in a bikini it's like yeah we see a lot more than that <laughs> yeah yeah it's we're so deconditioned to it it's yeah it's interesting what you can get used to yeah right so speaking so of how are you how are you feeling yeah. um I, you know to be honest with you i'm not 100 percent right now so um yeah <laughs> so for those of you that did not watch my stories um I passed out yesterday and I hit my, my back and my head on the way down. Apparently, I don't know exactly what happened. So the night before I wasn't able to fall asleep. It was like 2 AM and I was just staring at the ceiling. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna take an edible. Yeah, Cause I do that in extreme situations. I, and I haven't taken one in forever, like literally since last year at some point. And so I took the edible and passed out done. So I got up that morning and I was doing everything like normal. I could still feel it. Like that's one of the reasons why I don't take edibles very often. Cause I still feel groggy the next day. So I was like, I, I still could, but I could really feel it. Like I felt like I had just taken it. You know what I mean? And by this time it was like eight 30 in the morning or something. It was, it wasn't like it was like six o'clock in the morning. It was, it was pretty late. And so I'm, I'm filling up the, the little thing for coffee, right? The, the actual pitcher for the water. And I feel myself starting to get like, hot like my whole body is just getting like i can feel it and i was like okay so i'm gripping onto the the, the water dispenser and i'm like oh, okay all right i got this like i breathed through it and then i went over to the coffee pot itself and i set the little the the water thing on the counter and I, again i got that wave over me and i was like oh shit and i like grabbed onto the onto the counter next thing i knew i was on my back on the floor and the coffee pot not the water part but the coffee pot itself was on top of me with like the grinds everywhere so i must have pulled it down with me when i went but thankfully i didn't pull down the glass pitcher because if i pulled that down it was full of water and it was glass it would have broken glass. it would have busted you know and i would have woken up and i would have been in, in glass and in water you know what i mean so thank thank god that didn't fall but i'm like sitting there and i'm on the ground and the coffee pot's next to me, like I said, and I, I, I can't physically get up because my head hurts, you know? So, like, I'm spinning still because of the, the edible. And Dan's not there. Dan's outside with the dogs doing cardio. So I'm just laying on the floor, and I can't do anything. And I'm trying to call him, but he's doing cardio, so he's not on his phone. So I literally just laid there for, like, 15 minutes to, to the point where I could actually sit up. And then I finally went out, and I, I was like... I, I was like, Dan, I need your help. Like, I just, I just passed out. So, um, the all, all day yesterday, like I did, I did consults yesterday and I don't even know how I got through them because my brain was just like, and like, I would say stuff and forget that I said it. And I'm just like, what did I just talk about? Like, it was, it was bad. Like, wow. I, I've never, I've never felt like that before. And like all the way through yesterday till I would say around five o'clock at night, I was really spacey. Like it was one of those things where I, I didn't know what just happened. Like I would forget the 10 seconds just happened a, a second ago. You know what I mean? And I was like, I don't know. I, I'm like this part of me is like, I think I got a mild concussion. I think I did. Yeah. And um, by the time I got to my live feed last night, I was cohesive and co co coherent. I could talk and all that kind of stuff. And I was, and I could remember what I was saying and I could string things together. But I'm just like, even when we were doing our coaching call yesterday, I was like, my brain was just like not even there, you know? I know Drew was calling you and you, you couldn't figure out how to like, yeah. unmute yourself. you're like, I'm yeah. here. I'm here. I'm here. I swear. I promise I'm here. I'm like, I, I, I'm hearing every single word, but it's just going in one ear and out the yeah. other. And I was just like, you know, and so I was like, I'm hoping if I just sleep and I'll be, I'll be fine tomorrow and all that kind of stuff. And today I'm, I'm better. Like I can, I know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> I'm stringing all my thoughts together. But even now, like I'm just a little foggy still. That's an improvement, you know? but. Oh yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So Probably I would say. throw those ones away. Yeah. I mean, I don't, and that was the thing. I was like, I, I, they're, they're little cereal, cereal bars. And I like take a little, a little bite of one of them. Cause I know they're strong. And I was like, all right, well that hit me really, really hard. Really, really hard. I've never, I've never felt like that before. So was everything else normal about your day? Like you got all your meals in water? Like yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything the day before and the, and yesterday I, I, I ate more 
sugary carbs yesterday because it just felt like my blood pressure was low. I just felt like I, I was like, I need something. Like, you know that feeling when you feel like you're drunk and you just need to get like carbs into your Food system in. really fast? Like, that's yeah. what I felt like. So I, I, I didn't eat normal yesterday either. So it was like not my, my typical, I eat a lot more like sugary st- type stuff than I typically do. So I'm sure that probably didn't help. So it probably spiked me and dropped me too. So, but that's just what I felt like I needed. So I kept on my macros. I was good. I was on my macros, but it was just different stuff than what I typically eat. Um, right. No, I was just wondering, like, if your, like, stomach was more empty, so it hit you faster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that definitely could have been it. That definitely could have been part of it, you know? I mean, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. I hadn't eaten since. True. Technically, you fasted at that point. Yeah, technically. I was like, I hadn't eaten anything until since probably, like, 8.30 at night or something. So, yeah, I was definitely fasted at that point, you know? You probably woke up still inebriated and then... You know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and no, I know I did. I absolutely no, I absolutely woke up still still feeling the effects hundred percent, but it was a lot harder than I typically feel it. Yeah. Um and then like if I hadn't if I hadn't passed out, then I wouldn't have had all those other symptoms. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have right. had all those issues. True. I would have just gotten through True. the the gotten through the edible trip and I would have been yeah. fine. But um but yeah, I was like it was just it was just it was just weird. You know, you that feeling where you just don't feel like you, you feel right all things and you're yeah. just like, this is just odd. I just you know, I didn't even go I, I had to go to my seamstress yesterday and I didn't even go. I had Dan do it because I was like, I just don't feel comfortable driving anywhere. You know what I mean? I, I, I could just blank out and be somewhere random, you know what I yeah. mean? So that's the worst feeling is like lack of control in any absolutely. part of life. But like especially your own body and you're like and you can't pull yourself out of yeah. this specific case, you just have to write it out. It's yeah. Like, it's scary. It's scary. It is like, it's, it's when you're not, in, the hardest thing is like, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not in control of my brain. Like that was the weirdest part. Like, I, you know, I would say things, like I said, and like 10 seconds later, I wouldn't remember what I just said. You know, that's so fucking weird. I was like, this is not, I don't like that. Not normal. <laughs> I was like, this is not, this is not okay. I don't not know. Not normal. I'm, not healthy. Like, yep. No. Yep. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do when I start losing my mind when I get older. <laughs> I'm like, this is weird. You won't know. That's, I, the, key. that's, that's the key. That's the key. I know. I was like, I was totally. You won't know it. No, I won't be conscious of it. So you won't know like, what's happening. Like that was, I guess, that's what's probably the hardest part. It's like, I knew I was, I was like sounding right. crazy. Like, I, oh my God. I was like writing notes down because I couldn't figure out what I just said. And oh my Lord, it was just weird. Wow. So thankfully, I mean, my, the majority of my clients all check in on Mondays. So that was done. So I only had like a couple check-ins to do yesterday. So I was able to concentrate enough to do that. You know what I mean? But and even with cardio, like I was supposed to do hit cardio yesterday and I was like, no, I can't do this. So I just did enough so I could get steps in, but I didn't yeah. push myself at all. None of that. And I was like, I, you know, I checked it. I checked in with Jamie this morning because typically my check-in days are Thursdays and I'm driving to Pittsburgh tomorrow morning. So I was like, I just want to get it done today. <clears throat> My weight, my weight went down after my check-in last week. My weight went back up because of the stress and because of the inflammation and all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like, man, I was like, oh, and I fell on th- on Sunday too at the gym. So That's right. I'm like, I'm like, what is wrong with me right now? I'm you like, and I are yeah. insane because my weight keeps going up the last couple of days too. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck is going on? Yeah. And I'm like, I know also, I know my period is probably going to come in the next three to five days somewhere. That's this, you know? this week is supposed to be my cycle. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's due it's due on tuesday next week but i was early last month so i don't know we'll see we'll see if it's gonna most show of my up clients are early, early this month right now okay so it's it's so weird how everybody's like in sync everybody's late at the same time early at the same time yeah so I think people are like four to five days early right now yeah and that was that was me this past month so i'm, I'm curious to see what happens this month and then maybe it was you know, a five-week month was it April five, a five-week month? I don't know. See, we, we've mentioned that before, but my tracker tells me, because I always have a 28 to 30-day 30, 30 cycle. Um, last month, it was 26 days. So I, I don't know. It's very rare that it's outside of that 28 to 30-day zone. So if it's 36, then this month will probably be 30, 32, something like Maybe that. Maybe you're we'll pregnant. See. Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> No. You're like, and we're done. <laughs> I, I mean, there's, there's, I'm not saying there's no possibility because there's possibility, but no. <laughs> it's, but it's not possible. No. no. I'm like, I, I was like, I'm, I'm very, very careful during that time frame of the month. I'm very, very careful during that time frame of the month. No. no. <laughs> Just no. Hell no. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I, 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 I,
<laughs> I know, right? I was just thinking about that this morning, actually. I'm like, are you are you the first child siblings? What are your siblings? Do you have siblings? Only child. I thought you had, for some reason, I was thinking you were an older sister or something. You're an only child. Okay, never mind. Well, say- Traumatic childhood that I endeared alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, like, I, you know, I laugh because I don't hate kids. Like, people always think that if you don't want to have kids because you don't like them. No, I actually love kids. I think kids are great. But you got to understand, I was the oldest of three. So I was already a mom when I was a kid. You know what right. I mean? You helped parent. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm I don't opposite want... for me. I didn't grow up with kids. So like, yeah. when a kid's in front of me, I don't know how to talk to them. <laughs> like, I don't know how to level with them. And then Greg, Jamie's husband, was so funny. We, we had one of our clients that has a kid come and visit us after class a couple weekends ago. And he's running around the room. And Greg is just so good with, like, talking yeah. to him. And, resp- and I'm like, how do you speak to a child? Because you just talk to them like an adult. Like a normal person. You just level yeah. with them. And I'm like... Okay. <laughs> but yeah. like what, for me, like, you know, he's coming up and he's like, ah, and I'm like, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Because, like, you know, <laughs> responding versus like, you know, having a good response. I don't know. It was, it's very interesting. Yeah. It's, well, it's just like anything else. Yeah. It's just like anything else. If you're around it, then you know how to handle it. If you're not, then you don't know what to do. You know, people coming into the sport are like that. It's like if they've never done this before, they don't know what to expect. It's the same thing Absolutely. with kids. You know, so, you know, again, I go back to like, I love my nieces and nephews and all that kind of stuff. I think they're great. Like when I'm around kids, I can play with them and all that kind of stuff. But I don't want to be, I don't want to be the mom again who has to change diapers and hear them screaming and all that. Because again, I had to do that my entire teenage life, you know, like the whole time. So I know people don't, my, my mom was sick a lot when we were kids too. So there was a good period of time where she was bedridden and things like that. So I literally was the mom. Like I literally took care of my siblings. So it's like, yeah, I'm done with that. I'm good. (laughs) That's what I, and and in in a way, when I talk to people that have a similar scenario as you, you know, that they are like, I was a parent already, you know, Mm -hmm. and I've had that experience and like, I don't want now children of my own because I've had that experience and it's not for me. And in, in my perspective or in my opinion, you're in a better spot because you know 100% what that looks like, what that feels like. It's not yeah. your child, but it's your siblings, which is just right. as close. It's blood. Um, and you know, for sure, like that's not for you. You know, people yep. tell used to tell us all the time, you're going to change your mind. Like you have no clue what it's like to be a mom. Like it's this, it's that, it's that. And I'm like, that's your perspective. Right. It's, it's, it's funny because when Drew's mom was here a few weeks ago visiting, you know, we're at dinner and we're talking about kids and she's like, you guys are not having kids. She's like, yeah. I know that now, like you guys are firm in that decision and you guys are not changing your mind. So yep. people are now starting to see at 32 years old, like, I'm not having kids. I'm not having kids. Yep. This is mm-hmm. this is the decision, you know. So, yeah. But it's interesting. You know, and it, and it goes back to like it just makes me laugh because people say, "Oh, you're selfish if you don't have children." I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I'm like, hold on. I'm like, first of all, yeah, okay, cool. I'm I'm selfish with my time. Not gonna not gonna deny. I am that. too. Not gonna I deny too. that. Yep. But however. When you're going to have children, that is a selfish, selfish decision. That's something you want. That is the definition of being selfish. You want to have a child. So don't tell me that you're not selfish and that I am. I'm selfish. So are you. You. This is what you want. That's okay. That's what you want. Well, and their always reason is who's going to take care of you when you're old. I'm like, yeah, I, I would not put that on my child. No. Like and, I would, I, mean, I would not put that on my child. Ever. And the way the way the, the society is now, most kids don't take care of their parents. You know, that's just not that's just not how it is anymore. You know, you, you better figure it out and have money put away so you can ha- be in a home and being taken care of because you're not going to go live with your kids. They're going to have their own kids. You're one hundred percent correct. Yeah, they're going to have their own run, family. Yeah, I used to run a Parkinson's boxing program, and I used to be so enamored by you know the the client in front of me who's very ill. Mm-hmm. and can't even walk mm-hmm. and their children they have five six children and i'm like where are your kids none of none of them are live in florida you know at the time and it's yeah. tough to take care of them because they're off living their own life you know and they had that perspective too they were like i don't need my kids to take care of me like mm-hmm. this is why i you know save for retirement and i live in that's a home right. and i have a caretaker like that's what i did to set myself up and that's right so that's it's always, it's always so maddening to me. People are like, well, who's going to take care of you when you're older? I'm like, yeah. I'm working now to save up to take care of myself. And that goes I back That goes back to yet another selfish reason. It's like, so you're having kids so they can take care of you. Right. That's selfish. Yes. <laughs> like, like, it's a selfish it's thing. Yes. Like, you're, you're bringing other people into the world so they'll take care of you when you get yeah. older. That is, that is selfish. Right. <laughs> 
everybody just take care of themselves okay right. work now right. to take care of yourself work yes. now to take care of yourself later learn how to save your money like it's not yeah hard. and again going back to it's like if that's what you want that's cool like again I'm, yeah. I'm i'm good with saying i'm selfish with my time and my life this is my life it's mine I, i'm selfish so it, it is what it is you but, get to live it however you want right to. but admit that you're selfish too and that's what you want you want to have kids and you want to have somebody that's going to take care of you when you get older that's okay yeah we're right. all our we're all our own version of selfish yeah we take this down diet and exercise yeah. people don't want to diet and exercise because you're selfish of what you want to eat and how you that's want to right. spend your time and that's okay too like yeah. everybody's decisions in life are you know personal and unique and should not be judged <laughs> that's right yeah i got to so this is a different tangent about this stuff so i got onto a thing this weekend on one of these comments on a, on a reel because it was these young guys in their 20s talking about how uh they wouldn't date a woman if she was over the weight of 140 to 155 pounds and that's fat like fat like oh, stomping well, i would be out in my off season <laughs> i know right like stomping through the kitchen fat and i, I got mad because i was like bro i'm like you have no clue what is healthy in a woman if you think that 140 pounds is fat and like you're gonna hear them coming when they walk are you fucking kidding me like so Gross. i got into whole, yeah i got into this whole thing in the comment section and stuff like that it's just amazing to me how quickly the other part Okay, we're, we're going to go down the little little side tangent. Another tang rabbit hole. Another little side tangent. Um, so for those of you that don't know, I grew up Christian. I went to a Christian college, private Christian college, all that kind of stuff. And I can say that I 100% believe in God and I'm very um, spiritual, but I'm not a big fan of religion. So the reason why is because a lot of Christians are very hypocritical, <laughs> incredibly hypocritical. So, you know, this, this particular page that I commented on the people that run it, like in their bio, it says, you know, believer in Christ or, you know, that kind of thing in their bio. Right. And the first thing that they commented when I commented was that I look like a man. I was like, Oh, how's that love of Christ doing for you right there? <laughs> like, cause the first thing you're going to say to me is you're going to judge me on the way that I look because I carry a little bit more muscle than most people in this world. Cool story. So, um, but the reason why I got into this whole thing on this, this thread is because again, you know, we deal with women every day and trying to get them outside of this box of dealing with a number on a scale, you know, I just had a client this week and she freaked out in her check-ins because her weight was up and I put the whole story about how I responded to her about that. I was like, you do realize I said, this, this is our goal. <laughs> you know, our goal is for you to gain muscle. That, that's been our goal. And I told you from the start, if you're going to gain muscle, you're going to have to put weight on. And I showed her, I was like, this is where your weight. And she literally has gained 1.2 pounds since we started working together two months ago. So it's that's not it. a lot. It's that's not. It. Yeah. I'm like, I was like, if you think that you're getting, if I thought you were getting fluffy, I would tell you, because that's what she felt. She felt like she was getting fluffy. I was like, look at your photos. I was like, you literally look more toned in every single one of these photos. I was like, that's what happens when you put muscle on. When you put muscle on, you, you carry more water, which means you're going to carry more weight, period. You know, and like, this is the kind of thing that we as coaches have to have to fight against all the time. Because these guys come out and say, well, you can't be 140 pounds or you're fat off i'm like I, i'm 140 pounds when i get on stage i look like i can break in half that's exactly. not that that's like the leanest i've ever been in my life and i'm 140 pounds yeah we I'm get like, so attached to that number and not what we actually look and feel like yeah yeah like, absolutely i always say on the consult calls you know they're like well my best weight 10 15 years ago was 115 pounds and I'm like, can we step back for a second? And can you put yourself in a reality where at mm -hmm. 125, you love the way that you look? Mm -hmm. At 125 pounds, you're lean, you have good mm -hmm. muscle. Oh, I just can't imagine that. I can't imagine being 10 pounds over what I think is my, and that's so sad. It's like, yeah. stop chasing that number, especially for someone that's coming back after, you know, like a hiatus of health and fitness. Like you have no clue yeah. what the number is gonna be when you love your aesthetic. You, you truly do not know because, yeah. You, you could be putting on a ton of muscle, you're recomping, you could be the same weight and be recomping and love the, the, the body that you're in. And you're absolutely right. Like we fight that every day, every mm -hmm. week as coaches. Once a day, once on a check-in day, I have this conversation with a client of mine that's freaking out that their weight's up and then they report that they didn't sleep last night and they had a terrible work week and their stress is through the roof. Yes. And then the next week their weight comes back down. Like, yep. You know, it's they they they're so committed to what's on that scale, and it's sad because it alters what they think and hear and their mindset, well, how they approach and, their day. 
And on top of that too, just what you're eating too. So many of these women that, that come to me, they're, they're, it's, they've been on restrictive dieting their whole life, you know, where they, they just don't even enjoy food. Like they don't enjoy the simple things in life, you know, because they're so focused on hitting a number on, of a, on a scale. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, Where's the really you're, yeah. I'm like your entire life is revolving around that one number, the one yeah. number that literally can change if you poop. I mean, it's just like, it's just crazy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> again, I go back more and more like people yeah. want to take free meals. And I'm like, well, why don't you want to take no. it on track on your off season? I don't want to see my weight shoot up. I'm like, well, your weight's going to shoot up whether I increase your macros and you start, you know, you take adding more muscle or just, you know, mm -hmm. having more volume of food or you take the free meal, you know? Yep. So wouldn't you rather have that free meal and the balance? And like, how does your husband feel about this? Like, is he okay? Like not, you know, so it's, it's, well, it's even, you know, even more prevalent. Extent even the extent of like, like, you know, again, going back to, you have to eat just fish and, and asparagus and broccoli and things like that. And no, it's like you, there, you can have a whole gamut of food, enjoy your life and look and feel great too. It's yes. like, it's a concept that people just don't understand. And it's crazy. It's like, it's, it's the, the extreme. It's like, yeah. It's the basics of, of living, you know, and it, it comes back to just marketing over the years and what our society has pushed on people for diet culture. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's crazy when you think about how much our minds are warped because of that. And that, the, oh. the, that like yeah. fruit is bad for you. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> still a crazy one for me. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy to me that people think fruit is bad or I just got, I think I t talked about this in the console or on, on here about four weeks ago, I had a consult where the coach was telling her that she can have as much fruit as she wants. It's untracked. It doesn't have calories. And I'm like, so how much banana are you eating a day? Oh, cool. So we're eating about a hundred grams of carbs and banana a day because it's, it's free. It's not true. Wow. Yeah. Goodness. So it's, it's so... two completely different thoughts. Yeah. And where do we get that? Where, where's the misconception? Like fruits bad or fruits free? Nope. Just find the healthy balance of fruits allowed within yeah. a healthy quantity yeah. tracked in your macros. Like, yeah. I don't. Wow. You know? That's yeah. the, the fruits free is an, is a new one. I've not heard that one. <laughs> That was a new one for me too. I said, I said, are you sure? Like, and it, it said it right up. At, she sent me the plan. It said it right up at the top. Well, damn, that would be the easiest contest prep ever because I would just eat fruit all day long. Me too. I love fruit. I yeah. love fruit. I love frozen blueberries. Give me a banana. I'm happy. Like, yeah. I love fruit. Yeah. We, and then we don't, totally have, we don't even have to worry. Fruit. We don't even have to worry about the medium banana thing if it's free. Exactly. Jesus. Exactly. Medium banana wouldn't even be medium banana. No. Hashtag medium banana. I know, right? That's our, our contribution to diet society. Medium banana. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we did contribute. Oh, we did. Because you know, I'm sure you did too. I had at least 10 women reach out to me. Oh, and they're yeah. like, oh my God, I track one medium banana all the time. Yeah. Like, it's not okay. It's not. You got. You still got to weigh it and take it's the peel, okay. take the peel take off the peel when off. you do it. <laughs> it's like, unless you're going to eat that shit, because I don't know, I don't know how you do that exactly, but have at it. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Sorry. We have to get shirt. I think this should be our Olympia shirt. I medium love it. Hashtag, medium banana. Yes. It's hashtag medium banana. And we should do like what, like, so long story, but I'll make it, I'll make it short. A friend of mine is a, is a photographer and he's been a photographer forever. Right. And what really launched him is he took this photo of a model while she was eating banana and that got, that got put onto shirts at like forever 21 or something like that. And it was just a picture of a, of a hot girl eating a banana. <laughs> yeah, it was like, that's what launched his whole career. Because it got picked up and put on on freaking uh, t-shirts. How can we do a photo shoot with a banana? Bananas, I know. <laughs> we should do that in Pittsburgh. You and I are going to be in Pittsburgh at one point together. We should I'm hire sure. a photographer. Do like yeah. a thirty minute shoot. It'd be we fun. totally. And that that'll be our that'll be our um our our merch line right there. We'll have the medium banana <laughs> t-shirts. <laughs> See, every week we come up with something new. Last week we're like we're gonna do stickers. We got this. Yeah. Okay, Standing upon this, we're gonna do a medium banana. <laughs> I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Bring in the graphic designer. <laughs> I know, right? I think you told like the medium banana thing is. A, I think is a really good idea. We could have shirts. It's a really good say, idea. Hashtag medium banana. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I would buy that one. If I wasn't me. I know. Sorry. Okay. I would. To I would totally subject. wear it. Yeah, I would totally wear it for sure. But 100%. speaking of show day essentials, bananas are one of mine. Bananas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying I. 
I don't usually eat bananas on show day, but I have them all peak week. Uh, I love bananas. I like for peaking or like yeah. show day because the potassium it just makes me yeah. feel like so loose when i'm on stage i don't know i love bananas I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to try that i usually so my thing is usually blueberries when i go into the last because they're just low volume you know what i mean yeah so um but no i bananas is a good is a good idea i just have never done them for actual show day so see i feel like bananas are low volume high calorie so it makes me feel like i eat less but i'm getting like those higher calories yeah. when you're going that makes to sense. Show. They, like keeps my stomach tighter. Yeah, that makes sense. No, I'll have to. I'll I have love to try blueberries it. too. Frozen blueberries yeah. are my freaking jam. I eat those yep. every day. <laughs> yep, yep. So blueberries, blueberries are what I get in the last couple of couple of weeks of prep, really. And yep. then, you know, and I, I do get bananas. I'll do bananas um, through peak week and all that kind of stuff. Like I said, I've never done one show day. I might have to try that. My old coach years ago used to make us make this little concoction. And what was it? It was bananas and peanut butter, oats and like craisins and honey. And I think, I oh, think, and that was, yeah, yum. I know. And that's what we ate for pump up. That's like a, Oh, well I wouldn't want that right before pump up, but I'll take that as like meal one. And like, well, the hard part about that is that it was so good. You just want to keep eating it. Yeah. So like I would have a big jar of it. And by the time show day was over, it was gone. So it's like, and that just sparks the sweet tooth because of the honey and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So it was actually, I wouldn't do that again because it was too good. You know what I mean? Like it's like, you know, you, your when, limit. Yeah. When you start putting all that refined sugar in and stuff like that, that's when your hunger hormones go woo right after right. show. So I, you know, going into, into show day stuff, like we were, we're going to talk about show day essentials today. I don't, I don't take sweets like that with me. I don't take cookies. I don't take brownies. I don't take stuff like that with me. I used to when I first started competing. And I really think that that was what kind of sparked binges after shows. So I just don't do that anymore. Like I stick to the, the first thing that I want when I get off stage is I want an energy drink. That's the first thing I want. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And as soon as I have that, that's my sweet, sweet craving is done. I'm good. Yeah. And then I just want like real food. I want like a steak and like a salad with dressing and stuff like that. I don't, I don't. That's what I want too. Like a cold yeah. salad and then like a good hearty meal. Like yeah. Like steak, potato, like, yeah. Yep. And like a glass of wine. That'll, that'll put me to sleep. And yeah, yeah. and I'm good. And so, a shower. And like, a shower. That's the first thing I want to do. First thing is a shower. Can <laughs> I just go out to eat a shower later? I'm like, no. No. Uh-uh. This uh -uh. is coming off right now. Yep. Everyone I was wait for too. me downstairs for 20 minutes. I will be fast, but I'll yeah. get this first layer of tan. You can keep your your, your makeup on because usually your makeup yeah. is a couple shades lighter than your body. So once you rinse, you look normal. Once you got right. your once you rinse the tan off, you look exactly. relatively normal to go out. Um so yeah, but shower is absolutely the first thing. So first um thing. so let's go into show day and show this is just peak week in general, like what you stuff that you need for show day. So um starting, you know, going into the into the show week, let's talk about tanning stuff. So are you doing DIY stuff now too with tan? Or are you doing sprayed? I'm doing DIY now. Yep, I'm back. I'm back with pro tan. I'm doing DIY. Um, I just think that I have a lot more control over it. I don't necessarily love doing the DIY. It's easy. It's simple. It's all those things. But like, I love just showing up and getting sprayed. But I've just had so little control over the situation and where people are and the color coming out. So yes, I have all my DIY stuff in my room backstage with me as well to help do touch ups and whatnot. When do you start your tan? Like if it's a Saturday show, when do you start it? I usually start it on Thursday. Okay. Okay. But I start exfoliating and stuff like Saturday before show day. Yeah. And then I start like shading on Wednesday and I get everything done like Thursday morning. And then I put that first coat on and I just kind of let that hang out while I'm traveling and start really like absorbing and soaking in. Yeah. I start my skin prep at least two weeks out. Yeah. Um, if not more. Um, I, I really start doing the moisturizing and stuff at least a month out. But then, oh, you know, yeah. yeah, we start the exfoliating and all that kind of stuff a couple weeks out. Yeah. Um, and I always use the, the skin prep products from Liquid Sunrays every time just because, hey, they they smell really good. So that's the first thing. Um, <laughs> but they just make my skin better than any than anything else I've, I've used. So um, so I start that a couple weeks out. And then I do the tan ahead of time, too. Now, I typically get sprayed. But like this last year, I did spray myself. So um, right. I actually enjoyed that. Um, I don't think it's for everyone. I think you have to be very capable of being detail oriented, which I am, <laughs> yep. but, but some people are not, um, me, I could not do that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Nope. I actually really enjoyed it. It took me a couple of times to get used to it. Like, I don't think my tan was great in Hawaii, 
than it was in Japan. And I think also part of this was the fact that a Jap Japan was an afternoon show. The hard part about doing it in the morning is that I don't think that the tan actually settled and developed enough getting to the morning show, which was 8 a.m. In, in Hawaii. So um, if it's a morning show, I probably would reconsider doing it myself. Honestly, I think it was just too stressful. Um, the fact that I had, pl had plenty of time going into the afternoon show for Japan was great because I could take my time. You know, again, I'm very, very detail oriented when it comes to that kind of stuff. So like. And you do your own hair, makeup, yeah, and tan. So that's a lot on you. Yes. The more so if you have an afternoon, then you, you have plenty of time. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. So, you know, and, and that I, I start my tan with just a, a base coat hand, hand put on on Thursday as well. Sleep in it. Uh, Friday, get up, do my skin prep like normal and put another coat on. Um, and then go to athlete meeting, all that kind of stuff. And then that night I'll rinse it again. And then I start my actual spray. Right. So um, the spray, I do one coat at night on Friday. There's no sense in doing more. Um, because the one coat will get in and develop. And then Saturday morning, depending on how that looks, if it's all j janky and stuff, then I can go rinse it and do another coat or two. Um, in Japan, I didn't need to rinse it. It was fine when I woke up. Um, it, is, it absorbed really well because I'd also skin prepped a lot because I was getting the tan off from the week before. So everything just absorbed really, really well. And then I don't think I even did two coats on Saturday. I think I did one, and that was enough. Um, but again, I brought my – I have an actual spray gun that I got from Amazon – it was like a hundred bucks. It sprays upside down. So like you can bend over like that was people are like, how are you going to get your hamstrings? Well, it sprays upside down. So I would literally bend over in the mirror with my ass up in the air and spray under, underneath my hamstrings uh, to get that. And then I Perfect. have this, I have this roller, this um, bareback roller. You can get it out again on Amazon. And I use that for everything. As soon as I would spray myself, I'd roll it. And I'd spray myself and I'd roll it. And that's what made it really even. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't go through and just spray my whole body and then start rolling it out. I would spray a section and roll it out, spray a section and roll it out. And that really absorbed really well. And it was a very even tan. And then um, I would also say one of the things you got to be careful of on show day is your glazing products too. So again, I brought my own glaze with me and I just pat it on versus oop, just <laughs> like that <laughs> somebody does that and all your shit goes everywhere um, yeah. but, <laughs> but when like somebody else puts the tan on or the, the glaze on you they could smush it all over your all over your body and and smear the actual tan so or just I would spray say, it and then you just have blotches that's yes. what i've been seeing lately is just they just ch -ch -ch, and they don't even mm -hmm. wipe it down and i'm like so it's again it's one extreme or the other <laughs> it's like they it's like it's too much or too little right. yeah yeah so I would say for show day, be really confident in your glazing, meaning like mm -hmm. whether it's you doing it or it's your coach or somebody doing it, that, that it makes a huge difference when you're on stage. It can make you look like you're popping or you're not Correct. real quick, yep. real quick. Yep. So what are some other tanning essentials that you would do going into a show? <sighs> Just moisturize. I think people mm -hmm. under estimate the power of being having moistured skin so like two yep. weeks out from show i tell my girls to be moisturizing morning and night um and that's been something that's really helped my skin as well especially when back-to-back -back shows because yeah. that tan just kind of eats your skin alive you know yeah. just kind of sitting in there and so moisturizer really helps kind of the, keep the pores nice and soft so the rest of the product starts to come out mm -hmm. um so that's what i would say is just moisturize and then when it comes to like clothing and stuff, so I always bring black sheets with me. Oh yeah. And always have really comfortable baggy black everything. Yep. Um, they always tell you not to wear red because red will mess with the pH of this of the actual um, tan. The tan. Make it turn you green. Uh, yep. Those kinds of things. So black is essential. Um, if you're bringing sheets, you know I I always bring one black sheet, and I wrap myself in it like a burrito. And uh, yeah, and then I wear a hoodie. So like when I'm sleeping, I sleep with the hoodie on. So then that way my hair and my, my neck, if I've got tan on it, is all covered, everything. Um, and then if you're seems, blonde, sleep with your hair in a bun yeah, because uh, if your blonde sits on your skin, it will absorb the tan and then your mm -hmm. hair will yellow. Yep. Yep. So there's that. Um, I sleep with my hair up anyway. Uh, so get yourself a silk bonnet or something like that if you, if you don't have one already. Um, and then also like a pillowcase, if you want to do a pillowcase or again, I just bring extra hoodies. I always have a bunch of hoodies on me whenever I go to a show. So I put a hoodie around my, around my, my, my pillow. I bring my own pillow with me too. 
I don't know if you're that person, but I'm that old person that needs to bring my own pillow in order to sleep. <laughs> no, I bring like a California king so that I can go all the way around the pillow. Like Okay. Outside. But then I can also burrito myself like this. Okay. Way. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm that person that I bring my own my own pillow because if I don't, I bring it to every show, not just shows that like I, I'm competing at. I bring it to every show. I have my um, baby blanket, but I don't bring a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> um, what other? So, and then also like your feet, you should have flip flops. Um, so no socks, so you don't have sock lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And underwear. I had one client who wore underwear to bed after getting spray tanned, and she woke up the next morning and had actual granny panty lines on her butt. Yeah, and that's tan. something that a lot of people, I guess, don't know. You know, they yeah. feel uncomfortable like walking around from their hotel room down to the tanning area mm -hmm. with no bra, no panties on, but everyone is doing it. Like, everybody. If you Editor, like you are walking around and you can find the competitors before show because everybody's in big black loose clothing with no yep. bra, no panties on. And again, you know, Sean and I were just talking about this earlier about like how we just look at butts all day. Like we don't even think about anything. Like right. this is something now that everybody is just very deconditioned to if you've been around the sport. So yep. for any amateur who's never done that before, I know that maybe seems uncomfortable and weird, but it's very normal when you yep. are at a hotel, you're going to see it everywhere yep. so don't wear anything tight because it's just going to rub the skin and then you're going to have whatever that is left on your body when that when that suit right. goes on so, yeah, you know so at the end of the day if, if your if your suit wouldn't cover it you shouldn't have something on it tight you know so like if you want to you can put pasty on pasties on they have the same thing for for your crotch area too a lot of the um tanning companies will actually provide you with those if you want that to cover yourself up. So if that's something that you're concerned about, they do have that. But just think, if it's going to be exposed when you have your bikini on, then you better not have anything tight on it right now. So the you know, same yep. thing with the pants. The pants should be loose. I see that a lot where girls wear like yoga pants and then they got the seams up the side and then they got they've got seams in their tan up the side of their up the side of their leg. Um, <clears throat> or socks, like I said, sock lines and things like that, panty lines, all those kinds of things. And you see all of that. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, yeah. like I was saying, my old girl that, that wore the granny panties, they went to try to fix it the next day, but it had already developed overnight. There's nothing you can do about that. And then she ends up with, with mud butts. So we laugh about it all the time. She ended up with mud butt on the, on the stage because they tried to make the <laughs> they tried to make the area blend and it looked like mud butt. When they so, take out that blending, you know you fucked up. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing too. Like if you can if you can avoid it, you know. I understand there's a there's the allure of using the people backstage to help you, but they're not looking at things like you look at things. So, you know, if you have your coach there or something, have them be the ones that like buff stuff out for you or glaze you or whatever it may be, because they're looking at you a whole lot more intently than these glazers that are just trying to get you done and get you on stage. Correct. They're not looking they're, at They're trying to get out of there. That's yeah. right. That's right. They don't care. They're going to say, oh, yeah, you're fine. And then they're going to let you go. I, I had that experience actually at Hurricane. Uh, the tanners backstage, they were not giving me the time of day at all. And Jamie was like, she's she's splitting center. Like, we need to focus. Yes. Like, yeah. This needs to be fixed. And then after the show, they were all coming up to me. And they were all, like, so nice, you know. Of course, because you won. <laughs> I, I was asking you to help me, yeah. you know, when you really didn't want to, you know. And that goes yep. back to, like, why I am now going back to DIY. I made the decisions I did because I have zero control in that situation. Right. Like, I can be yeah. very, very nice. But, you know, they are just so overwhelmed backstage like they don't care at the end of the day so sure. if i have everything i have i'm in complete control and that's what i need mentally to have less stress on show day <laughs> agreed i mean that's one of the reasons why i like to do the tan myself you know i've had i've had some really phenomenal tanners and then i've had some really bad me too. ones too me too you know, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, they are hiring tanning tanning girls who mm -hmm. are, you know, affiliated with the sport and they teach them. But there's not really like a professional thing for this. You know, it's just the, the, the best tanners are just the ones that have a lot of experience. That's right. A lot have, of done, experience. have done it all. Yep. They've done and it all. They know how to fix it. Aren't at every show. You know, yep. they're, they're, they're finding people that are in that area to service that show so yeah and you know the things that that bother us don't again don't bother them like dallas last year i had a splotch on my on my quad and i asked them backstage to buff it out and she's like oh it's fine you won't see that the glaze will cover it up all i can see in my photos is that splotch on my thigh that's all i can see <laughs> and i'm just like it's really freaking obvious and they like, no you'll be fine when you're on stage you won't even see that nope you can see it you what do you mean you're not gonna see a splotch on my thigh and my mm -hmm. front post like what yeah. do you mean yeah <laughs> Yeah, but it's but like, again, and you, you just argue, buff it. 
Yeah, exactly. You know, there is a, there's a way to be a professional in this sport, you know, and I'm sure some would maybe try to argue, but that never gets you anywhere. No. So you just have to. Okay. <laughs> move on. It's like, but, like, this is not going to be my mission today. I'm going I'm to I'm focus right. on something else. Um, is this what I'm going to put my stress on and raise my quarters all over? Absolutely yep. not. <laughs> so on top of that, be ready for anything too. So some other things, like I know I always bring, and I, again, I do my own hair and makeup for shows, but I always would bring that stuff anyway, even if I'm getting my hair and makeup done. Yeah. Because, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I have girls that, you know, they'll get their hair and makeup done from the people um, at the show. And then, you know, when it comes to finals, their lipstick's off and they're like, well, I don't have the same color. Mm -hmm. I have three different colors in my backstage bag. One's more pinky, one's more mauvey, and one's more of like a brown tone. So no mm -hmm. matter what I decide look, uh, I decide to go to that day, I can put something on between right. prejudging and finals. So yes, you should always have these things to touch up. And something else too is like, I understand between prejudging and finals, we lay around. We, mm -hmm. we lay down, we put our feet up and the women that don't like look at their hair before they come back down for finals and, a, <laughs> and it looks like they've been like laying on a, you know, just like clean yourself up right before finals. Just give yourself a quick brush, a quick, you know, um, hairspray. If you don't know how to curl your hair, you know, a brush does wonders. Yep. Um, Absolutely. But refresh yourself. Even if you're not in that top spot, like you got to come back and look the part. Also, you never know if your photos are coming from prejudging or finals. That's it true. could be either. You know, mm -hmm. so you got to be ready for both. That's true. You know, and that, that's the other thing, too. It's like a lot of makeup artists will stick around to do um, touch ups. And if they do go get them done, I stick around for touch ups. I'm there anyway. Like I have clients getting on stage. If I'm doing your hair and makeup, I'm there for touch ups. Come see me. I can't tell you how many girls don't come back to me. And then they go on stage at finals looking a hot mess. And I'm just like, I didn't do that on your face. <laughs> Like, I didn't do that on your hair. I didn't do that. Like, I'm not going to claim that work because that's not me. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I, want you, I want you to come back for touch-ups. If I tell you there's touch-ups, just come see me. You may not need anything. There's a lot of times girls don't need anything and they're good to go. Usually they need a little bit of lips. They need a little bit of powder. And like you said, run a brush through your hair and you're good to go. You know, but sometimes there's, there's things where like, okay, you got splotchiness because you laid on your hand while you're taking a nap. Whatever. We got to fix that kind of stuff so you don't look like crazy when you go on stage. So come and get touch-ups, go get touch-ups, whatever it might be. Cause again, you don't know, you might have, have pictures that night. And, and plus, two things that, re that are really nice to have, like if your makeup, I've never had my makeup artist stay. The one that I, in particular, she's usually out by the time uh, prejudging's over. So the translucent powder like yes. with a Q-tip is really good for under the eyes to really mm -hmm. cool up anything that's underneath the eye because that's where you're gonna get most of it from closing your eyes, you know, the eyeliner. And then mm -hmm. have a black and a white eyeliner in mm -hmm. your show bag all season. That way you just use that translucent powder, do your bottom lid, done. You look yep. like a fresh new person. Yep. You should always have, like you said, translucent powder. That's something to always have on you. Always have a lip color, like you said. And then I would say also have a bronzer, a matte bronzer, and just stick it in your bag. Because in that way, if, you're, if your makeup bars isn't there or something, you've got a splotch, you can just buff it out touch with a bronzer up. and you're good. You yep. know, as long as you have those products on you, you're going to be okay. You're going to be able to touch stuff up. Um, but can we, like you, can we time out? I really need to pee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can go pee. We'll keep it running. And our newest partner is Prozis. They are an amazing, huge supplement nutrition company out of Portugal. And for them, they've got everything you possibly need as far as sports supplements are concerned, clothing, equipment, everything. The whole nine yards right there. So that is your QR code for them. Our code for Prozis is Cuties10. And then also, one more thing. They have an extra special going on right now where if you purchase any of their bars or their vitamins and minerals, you get extra percentages off when you use the code cuties10. So again, that link is in the description box or you can scan this QR code right here. I'm gonna get rid of the QR code so that you can see the discount code. There's your discount code right there, cuties10. And uh, that gets you money off. If you've not tried any of their stuff before, you need to. I know a few of my uh, coaching clients have now started eating their products and really love them. Um, I haven't had anything that I don't like, to be honest with you. So check them out. Um, they have protein stuff and they have just regular healthier treats. And I was mentioning this in the last live feed, it's almost like they have less, less preservatives and stuff in their food because they have more restrictions as far as what they can put and what they can't in their supplements and in their food. So 
Give them a try if you haven't yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, we, we were on makeup. Makeup. <laughs> Having translucent powder and yes. <laughs> all right, we're back. We're back. We're back. Okay. So yeah, bronzer. Um, and again, just having simple things like a brush to run through your hair. And, you know, we talked Hair's about this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about this before, too. It's like have the stuff with you that you would normally have for your day to day life. If you have that kind of stuff, you should be fine. Like, it's amazing to me how many girls go to shows and they don't even bring like a straightening iron or a curling iron with them. And I'm like, bro, I'm like, just bring your normal stuff with you. Like, right. <laughs> You never know what no. can happen. Like, and it's not necessarily even you that would do it. You run into someone, they spill some, you know, some yeah. stuff happens, you know? Yeah. So have an arsenal of things with you that if something happens, you can take care of it. You don't yeah. want to be like, uh, I should have brought my straightener. You know, like that's just yeah. something you should have with you at all times. Right. Especially, you know, if it's raining outside or it's humid and your hair goes all funky and all those kinds of things and, or you lose volume or whatever it may be like simple little things and be prepared to be able to do it for yourself too. You know, again, though I stay at shows, most, most people don't and, and right. they can't, if they're not there to help you, you've got to be able to be self-sufficient, you know? Yes. Just simple little things. And it's not like you have to be a glamour goddess or anything like that, but just make yourself look presentable. That's all. That's all. Um, so, I, you know, as far as the hair and makeup stuff, like I said, just bring your normal stuff with you. As long as you have that and you've got your your lip color, your bronzer, and your, your powder, you should be fine with that kind of Correct. stuff. Yeah. Um, what do you bring backstage with you? What do you? What's actually in your backstage bag? Um, number one is headphones. Okay. I am definitely the type of person that when I get backstage, I lay my blanket down on the floor. So number, a blanket too, to put your butt on or just to wrap you because backstage is most of the time cold. Headphones, headphones in and focus. You know, mm -hmm. focus on your posing, lay down, start feeling what the stage feels like, the presence, like stay in the zone. You know, like people have said backstage that... Um, I could either be like super, super nice. And I'm like back there, like fixing everybody's hair. And like, you know, when it's my stage day or I'm like totally in the zone, like don't want to talk, just focusing. And that's like the two personalities that I have backstage headphones. Um, I always have a second pair of earrings um, mm -hmm. in my bag. Earrings are like the number one thing to break, fall off. Um, I don't care if a bracelet breaks. Nobody's going to know that. Someone will know if I have one earring missing or no <laughs> earrings at all. Yeah. Yep. Um, so earrings I always have in my bag, um, everything that we just talked about, you know, lipstick, a hairbrush, hairspray, things like that, uh, water, and my pump-up food. A lot yeah. of people forget their salt and their water and pump-up food, and that's what we're doing backstage. Um, and then, of course, bands. We yes. definitely have I was that just going to say, I'd say that something to pump up with. <laughs> something to pump up with. Yeah. Yes. That's for sure something, because usually these shows don't have it. You know, usually they don't. They'd have them after the show when everybody throws them off to the side and forgets them. But, you know, when you're in the middle of the show, nobody wants to give away a band. Nobody no. feels comfortable like, hey, can I borrow your band? And everybody's secretly like, yeah, you could borrow it, but I'm freaking out now because yeah. I just gave you my band. Am I going to have, you know, it just causes anxiety for both parties. So, yep. so it's so easy. You could get a pack of five bands on Amazon for like 40 bucks, like with the yep. handle. You really want nice ones like it's not expensive so nope. and you'll use them you can take them yep. to the gym like i use plenty of exercises with bands so yep. um yes have, have your bands because that is one thing that you need and like i said nobody really wants to give up their bands backstage it's, it's kind of like not kosher no <laughs> and then because this happened so this happened to me in japan so uh, i put my band on behind the the stage or whatever when i went on stage when i got off stage you know in between individual and we're going out for comparisons i went to go back to find my band so i could continue to pump up and one of, there was a guy back there with one of his his people and he he had hold of the band and i was like uh that's fine because <laughs> like, i saw him go to take it he went to go take it and put it in his bag and i was like bro that's mine i was like can i have my band back like i stood there for a minute i was like maybe he's just gonna see he's gonna put it down he didn't put it down he went to go put it in his bag and i was yeah. like he's like oh oh oh, oh i'm sorry the, okay. The, it, it's the the guys, and I'm gonna call you out, guys. The men's physique guys. They are the worst. They never have anything, and they're like asking because usually MP and bikini are right next to each other, and they're yeah. like, hey, "Does anybody have anything I could borrow?" I'm like, "What? Like, no, no." <laughs> Go do some push-ups. <laughs> I can say that because my husband is MP and he there you would go. forget his bands if I didn't back his backstage bag for him. I know. So I can say that. Well, the one show that Dan did, he was Ben's physique as well. And um, and he brought his good bands and somebody stole them. Like he was pissed. Like Yeah, bands, bands are like 
banter, like a, a, I don't know, like a camaraderie backstage. Uh, I, I, wants each other's bands. I so don't get it. And they're just freaking bands, man. Like, I don't know. It's not, they're not expensive. They're not hard to find. Like, this isn't 2020. This is not COVID. Like, no. Well, <laughs> like, but have them backstage, have bands backstage. Yeah. Um, so I do all the same things in my bag. Um, I usually bring a towel to sit on, like you said, a blanket. So something to sit on because Can't you're not guar- yeah, you're not guaranteed to have um, chairs backstage. Just so you know, you may have to no. sit on the floor. Oh yeah. Um, and like you said, with your hands, bring makeup wipes or you know disinfectant. Um, Baby wipes. So that you can so that you can actually wipe your wipe your hands off because you can't get near water when you've got tan on you. So you need to have those with those wipes regardless. You need to have them. Bring them with you everywhere you go so that you can wipe stuff off. Um, that's, I think people that don't do that are the ones that tend to get a little bit more sick after shows because your immune system is compromised and stuff like that when you're in situations like that and people are nasty. So just be aware that people are nasty. They're going to the bathroom. They're not washing their hands. Just think about that. So make sure that you've got your wipes. Make sure you got your wipes for you no matter where you go. Um, they're going to save, save you a lot of pain and heartache. <laughs> now, let me ask you this question. I just mm-hmm. had this question from one of my first time athletes a couple weeks ago. She called me and she goes, how do you pee? How do you pee when, the sh- <laughs> when you have one. the tan on? So me personally, I have done like the Dixie cup method before mm-hmm. where you put a Dixie cup in a Ziploc bag. You poke a hole on the bottom of it. it mm-hmm. the, the bag is meant for cleanliness. So you could put it yep. in and out of but then you just squeeze the cup and, you know, pee through the cup. I've done that before. I didn't love it. Some people have like the easy funnel. I mean, I just do a really, really wide squat and I don't touch the toilet. So do you have anything like that in your bag? That's typically what I do, especially when I'm backstage. I don't bring my, my, pee cup with me backstage just don't yeah do i just feel weird carrying <laughs> yes. it around i do I I, doing it all the time and i don't yeah know, like, oh yeah you go girl but like i have, have it back in my hotel so. yeah okay. i have it back in my okay. hotel and i'll use it that way so it just depends on what i have to do when i'm going to the bathroom like if i have to sit then i put um you know the toilet paper down on the seats um because obviously if you got to go number two you're gonna have to yeah, sit you gotta I'm sit. like i'm sorry you have to sit so, i sit i just try to do that with the toilet paper and i sit very light yes same okay. Same. And I do the same thing you do where I try to just, I just try to squat when I pee. I don't try to pee through the cup if I don't have to. Um, I know some people will just put the hole in there. I actually cut out the entire bottom of the, of the cup. So it goes through. Yeah. Yeah. So it goes through because otherwise what you're using the cup for is a splash guard, right? So it's not hitting the sides of the bowl. So it's not splashing back up at you. Right. So if you're going straight through the cup, it's not going to splash up on the bowl. You know what I mean? Correct. That's that's what the cup is for. The cup is not to actually hold the pee, <laughs> you know, right. where, which is where I think a lot of people get into trouble because like the yeah. shiwi, the shiwis, that's what you're talking about, the little funnels, that's a shiwi, okay? That's the problem with those. They fill up too fast. They have a little hole, so it's like, you, it's a shiwi. It's not again. draining fast enough. It's not enough. draining fast enough. I've seen girls fill that up. It dumps on them. Mm. It's Fine. way worse than any kind of splashing that would ever happen <laughs> when this you dump sport, an entire man. cup so of shiwi pee on your leg. <laughs> I was was rooming with one of my clients at a show and she comes out and she's got this line all the way down her leg from oh, that's dumping, happened to me from dumping it. From well, dumping just for it on me herself. Pee. For some reason, I can pee straight any other time except for show day. <laughs> so for show day, <laughs> it just wants to go over to my thigh. It's like, fuck you. I'm going this way. And I'm like, Thank you. <laughs> now I have a line. I'm like, oh my God, my that's inner so thigh. funny. Oh, it happens <sighs> to me all the time. I am literally the worst when it's showed it. Like, the tan- this is why the tanning girls hate me. This oh, this is, is so why. funny. I'm, try- I'm sitting here trying to think if I ever had to go, I think maybe one time I had to go get my, my tan fixed from because of splashback. I think once. Wow. I, and, I'm, it, and that's it. It happens to me every time. <laughs> Sorry. What are you doing? Like I, I see, I see people like comment in these Facebook groups all the time. And I think I'm like, what are you doing to get pee all over yourself? I don't it's, understand. I'm it's like, my you urethra. This? It's not I'm, like, me. I'm like, do you do this in real life? Do you just pee all over yourself in real life? That's what I'm telling you. Like, <laughs> like normal life, this doesn't happen. And then every fucking show morning, like Drew will hear me. I'll go, ah, and he's like, do you just pee on yourself? <laughs> it's just, it's, it's just, it's part of my ritual. It is what it is. I've accepted it. It wouldn't be a show day if you didn't pee on yourself. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I mean, I would love a show day if I didn't, that I didn't pee up. I would love that, but it's not happened yet. <laughs> oh my God. It's so funny. Like I'm literally sitting here trying to think. I'm like, I think I had one time where it splashed on me and that's it. Like I never, well, I, you're never blessed. Peed, I never, I know I've never peed down my leg. Maybe because my legs are so long and they're thin. Maybe that's why they don't get hit as much so I can open them up. <laughs> then most girls, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I need to go wider. Who knows? Maybe I just really need to challenge myself. <laughs> you need you do sumo squats. Sumo squats while you're while you're That's peeing. What it is. Literally, but sometimes too in the hotels, the cor- you know the, the toilets are like in those corners, so like I can't really like. Oh, like, oh you know? so Japan, you know they have the they have these beautiful toilets in Japan, right? So okay. and like they they have a bidet, so you can spray yourself, and they can do light pressure or or hard pressure for the bidet and all that kind of stuff. But the seat of the of the actual toilet is warm too, which is fantastic in normal life. Wow, but it's not, I've never it's experienced not, that. It's not fantastic when you have tan on though, because it's Ugh. warm and it, it yeah. you know, you start to sweat. Oh, you can't turn it off? No, it's a heat. It's just a, like on this, I mean, probably on this one, I don't know, but like it's Japan and it was Japanese. It was warm and I'm not, I don't yeah. know. Not here, like, I'm not, <laughs> like, I, don't I don't know what to do, uh, but it was warm. So it's like, you can't sit there for a long period of time. <laughs> <laughs> but like I'm I said, not a really, sitter anyway. I'm just like a go would get out. I'm not. I'm not. Wait till you get older and, and you have digestive issues. <laughs> just got it. I went to my friend Nikki's house the other day and I went, there, I went to the bathroom in her guest bathroom. She has, it's it's a toilet timer. So you flip it and it looks like someone is going to the bathroom and like this, you know, the timer is like. That would a, give me so like much anxiety. I, I'm like, I was like, how long is that? Like what's a typical sit? I don't know. These are all the random thoughts that I come funny. up with. Like the, oh, so going to a, a show day essential is a squatty potty. Do you have a squatty potty? I don't, but she did. Yep. Yeah. So I girl. have a squatty potty. I okay. have a squatty you potty at it. home. I don't bring it, but because it's too okay, I was going to say, do you have a Mary Poppins bag? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I, no, I do. I actually, so I use vacuum seal bags. When, I, when I'm doing these big long trips, I use vacuum seal bags and it brings everything down. It still weighs as much, but the actual volume of what I have in there is way less. So right. you can vacuum seal it up and then you can fit a lot more into one bag. So interesting. Yeah. So I do use those actually. Um, okay. But with the squatty potty, yes, there are portable ones. I don't have one. But what you can do, and this is what I do, is I take, I have, depending on the, the, the size of the bathroom and everything like that, I have a, my small carry-on. I use that to stick, to put my feet on. Put your feet up. Or you can take the um, waste paper basket that's in the, in the bathroom and put it on its side. And you can do that too. So squatty potty puts you in an ergonomically correct position to go to the bathroom. Just if you, anybody that doesn't know what a squatty potty is. People so, that have them love them and swear about them. Yeah. No. So I, my house, Dan has the master bedroom bathroom. I have the guest bathroom because the guest bathroom just has better lighting, but he's got the bigger bathroom. So anyway, so I've got my squatty potty and everything in my, in my guest bathroom. That's my bathroom. <laughs> so when I go to your house, I'm the guest bathroom. Correct. The guest bathroom is the better of the two. Got it. Um, the master bathroom has the big, the big garden uh, tub and all that kind of stuff. But the, uh, the guest bathroom has better natural light. We have a skylight and then it's got natural light. And it's just better, just better. Pretty. Yeah, pretty. that's pretty. I'm like, I, the, the lighting in the other, ma- the master bedroom bathroom is like a yellowish, like fluorescent mm. kind of, kind of thing. So I don't, I don't like that one. So, no. and then, and then Dan takes Hollywood showers. That's what we call them. So <laughs> Hollywood showers are very long showers and he gets everything wet, like everything from top to bottom. Interesting. <laughs> yep. Everywhere. Everywhere. Just everywhere. Just everything's wet. The, the ceiling's wet. Everything's wet. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> like so. What is he that's... doing there? He's playing. That's what I say to Drew when he takes really long showers. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm playing. <laughs> yep. No, he'll be up there. Like I can hear him from downstairs. He'll be up there singing in the shower and stuff. I'm like, okay, whatever. Let him have it. <laughs> he, takes, one moment. <laughs> he takes cold showers too. So he calls them his woozoos. So he does the cold showers in the morning. So you hear him up in the bathroom. And he goes, woo <laughs> What is going on in your house? <laughs> This has gone on a really weird tangent today. I'm, I know. I think we should I'm, change the title to what we do in the bathroom. I'm totally blaming this on the concussion from yesterday. I'm totally blaming it's, it on it's okay. it's okay. People people will uh, will appreciate the, the candidness. I know, right? Oh, my Lanza. Okay, so let's get back to uh, Show Day Essentials. Um, 
So <laughs> in the bag, we talked about stuff that we take backstage. We take up pump up food. Um, I always have a second suit as well. You just never know. So I always have yep. my second suit second in there. Suit I always, the yep. I always have my, I actually have a second pair of heels too. I take yep. two of everything. I take the two of the jewelry. I take two of my heels. I take two of my bikini, everything just because you don't know. Um, you know, one of my girlfriends actually runs her own bikini company too. She was in the in the Olympia and she was standing backstage getting ready to go on stage for pre-judging and her connector in the center of her bikini snapped while she was in line for pre-judging. So she ran back there, grabbed her backup suit, threw it on and did pre-judging. So if she didn't have that back there, she'd have been screwed because like yep. you can't. There's nothing you never you know. Do. There's yep. nothing you can do. So probably could have safety pinned it real quick, but then it wouldn't have looked right and all that kind of stuff. So um, just always have a backup suit back there, just in case, just in case. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, really just having like your water, your scale, your your salt, your whatever it is that you're, you're normally going to have to have. If you, if you have certain pump up foods or you have certain foods that you usually eat on show day, have those, but have more of them. Because Correct. depending on what your coach tells you to do, they may tell you to eat more. Right. Yep. So always bring more than what you expect. Always yep. bring more than what you expect. I, I made that mis <clears throat> mistake in Japan um, where I had to go buy more food like two days before the show because I would just run out because we carved up so much. You know, so I had to go get more rice. I had to get, go get more almonds and all those kinds of things. Just always have more than what you think you're, you're going to need. Um, anything else for backstage that you can think of? Just your competitor number. Don't forget your competitor yeah. number. Yeah, don't forget your button. Yeah. Um, what I always do with that is when they give it to me, I put it on my bikini. Yeah, I hook it on my bikini as me soon too. as they give it to me because then it's going to be there the next day when I go to put it on, and then I'm yeah. not going to lose it. I've never, I've Correct. never knocked on some wood. I've never lost my competitor badge. So just have that on you, all times. Um, yeah, knock on some wood, <laughs> right? Um, so that I think takes care of show day stuff. So what's some things that you take with you that you find help you when you're like traveling to a show or something like that? Just random things you bring in your bag. So I'm trying to think, I mean, obviously anything that's going to help with, you know, our food and meal prepping and things like that. So like some people bring like their rice maker, or like their mm -hmm. little, you know, egg thing or, um, so anything that's gonna, that you're going to need to prep your food. Um, I mean, honestly, like I just keep it really simple. So mm -hmm. everything we just said is really what I bring. I literally have my show day packing list right here in front of me. And we literally nailed every single thing on it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think yeah. that I think that, that I hit everything or we hit everything. And also make sure that your hotel has a at least a refrigerator to put your food into. If they can have a microwave, great. If they don't, they usually have one set up. You know, if you're at the host hotel, they're going to have microwaves. They're going to either have a microwave in the in the rooms for you or they're going to have like a special place you can go to use a microwave. You know, they're going to have it for you. So that's another benefit of doing the host hotel because they're going to have it set up so that it's convenient for you as a bodybuilder. You know what I mean? Right. Um, <clears throat> as far as heating up food, I typically eat almost everything cold. Um, Me too. The, only, the only time that I need anything warmed up, it's usually when I'm making like oatmeal or cream of rice or something. And you can do that in the coffee pot. You know, you can do that yeah. in the coffee pot in your room. So you don't necessarily need a microwave. I don't anyway. Um, some people bring those little hot logic things. I have one. I don't usually use it. I bring it sometimes, but honestly, I don't really use it very often. Um, again, it, for I have one and I used to pack and bring it all the time and I've never used it. Yeah. I would, I just usually, if it's chicken and rice, I eat it cold and then the only time yeah. I need it for oatmeal. Yeah. Same. Um, I do have to have coffee every day. That's my thing. Um, and I need more than just the hotel coffee. So I bring a little, um, portable French press with me and I bring my own hmm. coffee, coffee grinds. So <clears throat> you can get one of these little coffee, like it's a portable French press. that looks like a tumbler. And so it's got the actual press on the inside. So you use it as your cup once you're done with the, with making your, your cup. So it's really, really easy. You just make your water in the, in the coffee pot and then you put your grinds into your actual, your actual uh, French press and you're good to go. For me, that is a lifesaver, upon lifesaver, upon lifesaver. Yeah. <laughs> so coffee's key. <laughs> yeah. If I have that, I'm good. Um, some other hacks, like if you have your gallons of, of water, usually the fitness center has water jugs. So you can go fill up your gallons of water in the fitness center. So you don't have to go run all over the place, to go get water. Um, Instacart is great. If you forget anything. I Instacart you know? all the time. Yeah. Me too. I Instacart almost, almost every show. I have like a regular, a regular um, list of stuff that I just have Me delivered, too. you know? Yeah. 
And yep, that's and, where I get like my fruits, mm -hmm. and packets yep. of nut butter. Yep. Um, yeah, like anything cold, absolutely. Yep, I bring all my, my regular food with me, but then like you said, your fruits, um, you know, stuff. Sometimes you, you just can't fit another set of rice cakes in say, the bag. You just things that are food. high volume, yeah. Like the rice cakes are really hard to pack because they're just so big, you know? Yeah. So just have them ordered and delivered. Um, you know, a lot of these hotels and stuff like that are connected to, ho to different grocery stores and stuff. So you're good. Like when we were at Charlotte, you walk outside the, the hotel, there's a CVS on one side, a Whole Foods on the other. So it's like, you just be right there. Everything's right there. That's and, great. Pro and promoters know that too. A lot of times they set that up that way. You know what I mean? Right. They, they, they pay attention to where you are and things right. like that. The host hotel is usually fairly convenient. There's only been a couple of shows a year I go to and I'm like, wow, there's like nothing here yeah. that's convenient like no microwave or nothing close, but yeah. most of the time they're looking at those things when they're picking yeah. the destination. Because right. they know what you need. They know what, they know what competitors need. Most of, most of them were competitors themselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, most of them were competitors themselves at one point. So they, they know, or they've been doing this long enough that the competitors come to them and say, we need this, we need this, we need this, you know? Correct. And yeah. that's something too, you know, if, if there's something that your, your particular sh show doesn't have, go talk to the promoter and, and tell them. So that they can yeah. either find it, find it for you, or they can prepare for it for the following year. You know? Absolutely. So, yeah. um, I'm trying to think if we missed anything. I think we got everything. Got everything on my list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Always have cash on you. Um, that's something cash, too. Yeah. I know that's something that, that a lot of people don't think about, but like people work on tips and stuff like that too. Just have cash on you. Um, that was something that I was not prepared for when I went to Japan because they work on, on, on cash with like a lot of the businesses there. They don't even take cards. It's just cash. So I, and I had nothing. So I just don't, I'm not a, I'm not a cash person. I'm a, I'm a card person, you know? So I was like, all right, well, I gotta go. I had to go have, and being in Japan, you can't just go to the ATM. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I had to have Dan actually wire me money. And I had to go in the ran like down these random streets to find the the, the Western yeah. Union or whatever it was in order to get the money so I could get cash. I was wow. like, it's like little things you didn't. I didn't think about that at all. And the little um, uh, that tour that I went on when I first got to Japan, he told me he's like, you need to have cash oh, yeah. on you. Cash. Yeah. yeah. He's like, you need to have cash on you because some of these some of these businesses just don't even take cards. They only take cash. I was like, oh, okay. So make sure you have cash on you just so that you're set with that. Plus, a lot of these places have booths, you know, like uh, you know vendors and sponsors and stuff, and a lot of them just take cash for their stuff too. So be prepared for that if you want to buy anything. Um, and I would also say. Get your stage photos, get your stage videos, things like that too. Um, if they have those for sale, that's something else to be thinking about as well. Um, because you'll still get some of those from NBC News Online. And then depending on how your coach is and what the, what the policy is for the photos and stuff, nothing is going to be as good as those actual videos and photos from the show itself. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So yeah. be prepared for those kinds of things. Those are your little added expenses you don't think about. Um, I think that's everything. I think that's everything. And I would say, I, like, again, I would caution against having too many sweets and too many things with you as far as stuff to eat when you get done with your show because i feel like that sets you up to binge afterwards yeah. so just be careful of that some of these promoters will have that stuff backstage let the guys have at it first if you let the guys have at it first you won't get any anyway <laughs> right so <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> or take take the one packet of something and stick it in your bag or whatever, you know, things like yes. that. So be very mindful of that stuff before you start eating it because it's almost like it it, it opens up that tidal wave. Yeah, of, oh, not anymore. You know what I mean? So be mindful of that stuff prior to so that it doesn't create a spiral is what I would say. Yes. Um, I think that's it. So uh, that's it yeah. for me because I have a posing call in two minutes. Sorry. Oh, all right. <laughs> no worries. Okay. Um, with that said, guys, this was a random off tangent. Very random, at some but very entertaining. <laughs> but hopefully you guys liked it because we talked yes. about lots of random shit and in, in for, for real shit. So uh, with that, we're going to, we're going to sign out for episode 37, right? Around 37? Yeah, around 37. 37. And, 37. Uh, and we'll get this out today. Next week's going to be an early podcast too, because again, more traveling. Um, and yeah, that's it. So enjoy your move. And then I'm going to get myself ready to go to, go to Pittsburgh tomorrow. Good. Safe travels. Thank and you. Have fun. And hopefully I won't have another concussion. We'll be good to go. <laughs> no, you get one of those. Like, one of those years. ever. Yeah, one exactly. of those. Just one. Just one. I'm good. Just one. <laughs> Though it made for an interesting podcast today. So there's that. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you back here again next week. And for Behind the Scenes, we are